everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna be sharing with you the pest control that I have done around the entire homestead for the past month or two. It has been driving me crazy that all of these wasps and hornets and yellow jackets, including mud daubers and carpenter bees, paper wasps, regular bees, they're all driving me crazy because it is one of my worst fears. I wanted to do something to get rid of all of these things. I first started with a bunch of natural stuff. We're gonna get into the video right away because there is a lot to talk about. Okay, starting with number one, we're gonna talk about how to deter the carpenter bees on your property. When I first moved to this property, I had carpenter bees on the big house deck, in the chicken coop, outside the chicken coop, on the deck, and around my tiny house. I had no idea how to get rid of them because I didn't wanna kill them. So instead of using sprays or insecticides, I researched how to get rid of them, and they said get fake wasp nests to put around because carpenter bees will not build around a wasp nest. They hate them. Ever since putting about eight of these up around my homestead, I have not seen many carpenter bees at all. They don't hover in my face anymore when I go outside, but they used to every single day. These really, really work at deterring carpenter bees. 12 of these were $16.99, so I thought that was a pretty great buy. They're reusable. Now, although some of these have been out in the sun for a while and they're starting to change color. I still think they're doing their job by deterring these carpenter bees. I think this one is a winner. Right along with those wasp nests, I also took a simple small paper bag and then put plastic bags inside those to kind of form them into a wasp nest and I also put those around the homestead too. Now a quick note, I will be dropping all of the links to the products I have purchased in the description below. And if you guys are interested in controlling pests around your property, then you can grab the link below. Number two, the next thing I did was place peppermint essential oil on cotton balls and place them in areas where the wasps were starting to say swarm or want to build their nests. Now in the chicken coop, there were basically paper wasps trying to build their nests on the tarp and on the fencing that I had put up. That's one place that I started, put about five or six cotton balls with essential oil on there. So far, so good. The paper wasps have not come back, but they were starting to build their nests before I had that stuff in there. There is some truth to peppermint oil working and repelling these wasps. Cost for this one is $19.99 for a 16 ounce bottle of peppermint essential oil. Number three, I got a 10 pound bag of diatomaceous earth. It came with a duster. This is the duster that comes inside the bag. You put the diatomaceous earth inside this container and use this nozzle to spray into corners or hard to reach places. It could let out a thin stream or it can let out a big dust. However, you decide to push down this nozzle. Now, diatomaceous earth is effective against any insect that has an exoskeleton, which includes fleas, mites, lice, ants, millipedes, earwigs, cockroaches, silverfish, bed bugs, crickets, centipedes, pill bugs, sow bugs, and most beetles, including fungus, gnat larva, and some grubs. You might be wondering how diatomaceous earth works. It is not poisonous. It does not have to be eaten in order to be effective. Diatomaceous earth causes insects to dry out and die by absorbing the oils and fats from the cuticle of the insect's exoskeleton. Its sharp edges are abrasive, speeding up the process. Basically, if the bugs get this stuff on their body, it basically cuts them up and they eventually die. Wherever you spray this stuff, they kind of get it on their bodies and on their feet and they will bring it back to the nest, spreading it back to all of them. Now it seems that wasps and hornets do not like this substance either, so usually they will not build nests wherever this stuff is at. I took it upon myself to shoot it in all the corners of the garage. I got the entire chicken coop on the inside. I got the outside of the chicken coop. I did the deck in the corners. Sometimes I would spray underneath my tiny house and in their dust bath because if they get if the chickens get it on their skin it helps them clear mites and bugs I 
I also put the diatomaceous earth inside their nesting area as well as their roosting area because when they roost, they go to the bathroom and flies and bugs tend to gather around their waist. Until I get that off of their area, if I spray some diatomaceous earth, it basically keeps the smell and the bugs away because they don't like it and they will die. I seem to have tons and tons of holes inside my chicken coop. I don't know what they are. You know, at first I thought they were bees. I researched that these things are called antlions and they burrow a hole in the ground. Whenever a bug walks across it, they wait for that bug to fall down a slanted built hole. And that's when the antlion eats this bug. There are a ton of them in my, my chicken coop and I have no idea what they really are. I'm just guessing they're antlions, but I don't know if chickens eat them. So when I go in to do my diatomaceous earth spraying, I do it all over the floor. And if those antlions die, then oh well. Right now I'm thinking that they're ground bees and I don't want them in the chicken coop. Hopefully this diatomaceous earth helps. And if the chickens happen to be in there dusting themselves off, they're getting a little bit of it on their body. For me, it's easier to turn it upside down because for some reason the powder shoots out further and a lot more and it seems to get stuck doing it this way. So I suggest turning it upside down and cost for this one was $33.16. Number four, because I still saw activity from these wasps around my deck, I decided to make sprays. Now, through some research on Google, I was told that certain sprays work on certain bugs, but I whipped up three different sprays. The first one is lemons, limes, and oranges boiled in distilled water. I added a little bit of clove essential oil, and this is basically a repellent for your body. I would also start to spray the deck, but they were still coming around after it dried, so I needed to make something stronger. The second one I made has peppermint essential oil, tea tree, and lemon essential oil, along with distilled water, and I also put some soap in this one. This you can use as a repellent around the deck as well, maybe minus the soap if you wanna use it on your body, but this was a stronger solution and I'm thinking it's because of the essential oils. When this solution was wet around the deck, the bugs would basically be turned off by the smell. They despise the smell of peppermint, especially. They would not come back until it dried. So I had to make a third spray, and this time it was a killing spray. So whenever I saw the wasps around my deck, I would whip out this and spray them, and they would instantly die. Now, why would they die? Because Dawn soap and water instantly kills wasps, and that's if you spray them and get it on their body. Wasps breathe through their body. When you get this Dawn soap on their body, it coats their body and they can't fly. They basically die instantly. There's no need for them to take it back to the nest because they can't. These three sprays were helpful for a little while. Each of the bottles of essential oil that I got were $19.99 each for 16 ounces, depending on what you're using these oils for. If you put them in sprays or on cotton balls, the $19.99 goes a long way and you'll get a lot of use out of them. Number five, the next thing I tried were these ultrasonic noise units. You're supposed to put them in a room worth 2,000 square feet. I put one in the living room, but then I realized I'm gonna need to put one in the bedroom, one in the kitchen, one in the bathroom, one in each of the rooms, one in my tiny house, and then I had this huge garage barn that I needed to make the whole thing ultrasonic repellent. So I purchased 12 more of them. Now I have one in each room of the big house, so there's six being used there. I've got three in my tiny house and I've got nine surrounding in the garage. Hopefully this will help deter some of the bugs coming into the garage and into the house. This doesn't really have to do with wasps, but insects in general. The directions on this say it takes three to four weeks for these things to start working and I'm not fully convinced that they do work, but we'll see what happens in three or four weeks. They do have a nightlight on them at the top. if you plug them in and you want 
to use it as a nightlight, you can, but if you want to turn it off, you can do that also. These bugs are supposed to be more plentiful when you first plug these things in as they start crawling out of their hiding spots and trying to find a place to exit the house. This also means that if you do spray the outside of the house, they're going to try to find ways onto the inside of the house and be trapped when they hear this noise. We'll see how these work in about two weeks because I've had them up for about two weeks. The cost for the first six was $35.99 and the cost for the second six and third set of six was $19.99 each. I spent $75 on 18 of these sound units. Number six, I got these hairnets. It's not actually a repellent for the bees to be around my homestead, but it's more of a repellent for me. I was researching that if a hornet or a wasp is provoked in any kind of way that they repeatedly try to sting at your face. Now seeing that wasps are my worst fear, I wanted to protect my face. If one lands on here, they can't really get to me because it's not on my skin. I'm not as worried outside, you know, with this on. Now it does does have a drawstring here that you can put it to your head. But quite honestly, I wanna protect this too. So I go outside like this. I protect my whole upper body half. They're not the prettiest. They're also not the coolest. It's very hot under here and sweaty, especially in West Tennessee when it's 97 degrees out. When I go outside and I'm mowing the lawn, I'm not getting stung by anything, but I'm dripping sweat underneath here. Now, honestly, I am thinking about getting an entire bodysuit of like this net because when I start mowing my lawn more consistently, there are ground bees. If their nests are provoked, they will come out and sting you. So I don't want to be put in that position. I'm thinking about getting a full bodysuit it's pretty hot outside to wear full clothing. A net, at least some air can get through. $6.99 for two of these. In my opinion, that was a great buy. Now when I hear buzzing noises around my head, I'm not as worried because I know that they can't get to my face. Number seven, I needed something to attract these wasps to an area away from the buildings and structures that I was using. So it was suggested that I get Y traps. These Y traps are liquid traps. These traps trap five species of paper wasps, bald faced hornets, European hornets, and 12 species of yellow jackets. Something to note here, these are reusable. You have to purchase the packets. One comes with it, but but to be able to reuse it, you dump out the liquid and you have to make the new solution. For the first two traps that I bought, I got them for $29.97. And the second two traps that I got were $15.08. The refills, the first three that I got were $16.47. The other eight that I got was $38.99. Here's something that's interesting about these. These use an attractant to attract the wasps to this unit, but I have put two of them around my homestead so far, have not caught many at all. So I have caught one European Hornet in one, in the other one, I don't think there's anything. I'm not really sure if these work. I don't know if it's because of the attractant that they use, but you do put an attractant in the top and one in the bottom. I don't know how long they're supposed to last. They say you're supposed to change out the solution every two weeks, but seeing as I only caught one European Hornet, I don't know if this is a good way to go. It's really expensive option to try to use this as pest control because it just doesn't seem to be working in my area. Number eight, I also purchased four of these reusable wasp traps. They were $26.59. These are basically a DIY as well. You open the bottom and you put your own in there, which could be sugar water, jelly, vinegar, beer, anything that attracts wasps, hornets, and yellow jackets. The thing about these is that I have these hanging up around the chicken coop and on a tree. I only have two of them out. I wanted to see how they worked at first. Quite honestly, I don't think they work for bees, but I've caught a lot of huge ants and some flies. The liquid runs out really fast. You have to refill them often. They don't catch what I'm trying to catch. It might also be where I have them positioned. Being that they're reusable, I can keep these and maybe test them later on, but 
but some of the other traps that I had gotten are disposable, so you kind of have to see if they work on the spot. But if you get reusable ones, then feel free to use them whenever you need, switch locations, and see what works best for your property. Personally, I use sugar water and I put a little bit of soap in mine to fill those. Use whatever attractant you want to attract these wasps, but I was hoping that sugar water would help, but it seemed to only attract other insects instead. Number nine, we are going to talk about these rescue sticky traps. These seem to do really well, in my opinion. Only thing I don't like is that it did get a butterfly, and I did not like that at all. But it is working to catch. That is a huge, I believe that's a European hornet. There are wasps on here. There are mud daubers. There are regular flies. But yeah, there's a lot that's gotten on here, and there has been a couple that has gotten on the other traps as well, but I'm not getting up there because they're near where the other wasp nest used to be. I believe these are working great. Even though they're disposable, the rest of the green can still trap a bunch of wasps. I've got three of these hanging on my property. We'll see how the rest do after more of my solutions. I believe cost for this was $30 for three of them. If I got those sticky traps at Walmart, it was because Amazon was about $6 higher when you got three. So I suggest going to Walmart to get the sticky traps. Number 10, I started using Hotshot in order to try to kill the nests that I knew had wasps in them. But the thing is, is that if these nests are behind places that you can't get to, if you don't remove the nest, it's most likely that when that liquid dries, they're going to come back. So after two days, I would start seeing more activity in the area, whereas right after I sprayed, it had died down for one or two days. So this is not a permanent solution. It's more of a temporary solution, but more of a, a sure shot. These things shoot from 20 feet to 27 feet. So if you can get the nest doused in this liquid, it kills off a lot of them. And then if you wait 24 hours, you can remove the nest to ensure that they don't come back. I did not want to remove the nests because I didn't know how to get up there and take apart my garage, the building, or the deck in order to find these nests. The hot shot wasn't really the way to go for me, even though I got about five or six cans. But I do have it in case I find a nest somewhere and I need to spot treat it. I used to stand by this door so that I could see if there was activity around the nests and then when it got dark i would go out this door and shoot the nest and then run back in the door as fast as i could i got a few of these cans at the dollar store they only cost about five dollars and 75 cents they will try to come at you if they know that somebody is trying to mess with their nest that is why you either wear protective gear when you go outside before you shoot this liquid into their nest stay 20 feet away Number 11, I tried to make these homemade looking traps by using a water bottle, cutting off the top, turning it upside down, taping that, and hanging that with that same sugar water solution in the bottom. You could also do beer but I didn't catch anything but one or two flies. Personally, those things did not work for me, but I hear that they do work around pools. Number 12, because the peppermint on the cotton balls, I don't think was working so well on my porch, I invested in these little bottles. You put the essential oil in there, which is peppermint essential oil, and then when you put them upside down, the liquid goes onto the string and into the wooden cap. You hang these around your homestead, well, I have a few of these in my chicken coop on the outside. There's about five of them there that have replaced the cotton balls and they are working well. If the smell starts to fade, then you can always turn them upside down again and re-wet the string. I also put five of these on my deck so that I could constantly try to deter these wasps, but it seems as if mud daubers for some reason are not affected by these. I'm seeing less wasps around the porch, but a lot more activity from just these basic mud daubers. 20 of these little things were $20.99, and then all you have to do is buy whatever essential oil you want to put in there. I suggest getting the 16 ounce because essential oil in a one ounce bottle goes really fast. Number 13, I also wanted to do pest control on my body, and this was not only the net that I put on my head, but actual repellents to put on your body to repel any pests outside. 
mainly ticks my business. You guys can check out that link right there and I'll put it in the description below where I make and sell herbal remedies and natural products. And one of those is tick repellent. So this tick repellent is made with distilled water, alcohol, cedar wood essential oil, lemon essential oil, and cinnamon essential oil. These things absolutely deter ticks. And I have had maybe three or four ticks on me since moving to this property and I did not have this stuff on. I do put this stuff on almost every single day. I also have a spider spray and an insect spray, a tick repellent for dogs. I will be dropping the links to these products in the description below in case you guys want to try them out yourself. Number 14, I decided to get peppermint seeds so that I could plant peppermint around my property. Because I've been using so much peppermint essential oil, I thought, why not grow the plants so that the wasps and the insects could naturally smell them growing and automatically be deterred and repelled away from my house. I got a few of these little seed planters and I'm gonna be planting some inside the house and then I will plant them outside around the house. These aren't going to be included in my garden this year. So I'm just, these are just for pest controls. When I do have my gardens, I'll add peppermint to those as well. Right now, it's just going to be a line around my house of peppermint, maybe lemon balm, catnip, things that automatically deter and repel insects naturally. Two packs of seeds at a thousand seeds each was $7.99. So $7.99 was a good buy for 2000 plants of peppermint. Hopefully it works. Number 15, because I kept seeing activity of wasps, I broke down and I got organ. I had the organ guy come over and at first I was going to do a year's worth of treatment because it was suggested by the customer service guy to keep the wasps away. So I guess this solution lasts only 30 to 60 days. They had a treatment plan where they were going to come and do seven treatments every other month and this would help keep them from building nests on the structures. When the orphan guy got here, I told him my story. I told him all the repellents and the deterrents that I've been using. I showed him all the places where I thought there was nests. He noticed that there was one European hornet in one of those Y liquid traps. And he said that those were infamous around Tennessee. So thank goodness I caught one of those, but still it was only one. He said that I could keep those things up around the homestead and that it wouldn't bother, you know, the treatment that he was going to be using. Now the treatment that he did use was a liquid instead of a spot spray treatment. At first I thought I was going to have a spot spray spray treatment where I had to know where the nests were in order for them to treat those areas. But thank goodness it was a spray treatment and he sprayed along the entire house, the chicken coop, my tiny house, the deck. made note to me to hide my chickens for a while, especially an hour, because if this solution got on the chickens, it would kill them. As he was spraying around all of the other structures, I had put the chickens in the outside of the coop. When it was time for him to do the inside of the chicken coop, we closed off the outside and was able to go in and he sprayed in there. An hour or two later, I let the chickens out and they were able to free range around the homestead, including under their tunnels around the house where he had sprayed and the stuff had already dried and would not affect chickens. But 30 days after he sprayed, all of the wasps and bugs and insects will be affected by this solution that he sprayed wet or dry. He had mixed up this solution so he could spray around the base of the buildings and the tops and the eaves of all of the buildings. Because the garage was like, I think a little bit too high, he had to switch to a pressurized hose, which was really cool because then he was able to shoot the liquid up at least 25 feet up in the air and get into the eaves where I thought all of these nests were. Now, because this mobile home that I have on the property has skirting all around it, he suggested that we use this powder in this shooting tool for us to get all of the bugs that were underneath the house. He also mentioned that there was going to be a lot more activity inside the house, whereas the bugs under the house were gonna be trying to escape to the inside of the house. And truth be told, I have found several spiders in my house, the mobile home, 
after the fact because of him spraying underneath there. But this powder supposedly lasts for a good month or two and it kills for months on end. Any bug that's going across this stuff will bring it back to the nest and or die instantly. I'm really glad that he did that too. I kind of wasn't expecting them to do any other insect pest control. I thought it was just for wasps. So I'm really grateful that happened. Total cost for this was $272. The Orkin guy suggested that I did not need a year of treatments because he said it's already June, almost July, and the wasps aren't going to be making as many nests later in the year as they would have in the spring. When he comes back in 30 days, he's going to do a basic another treatment. This hopefully will ward off any wasps until next year. Most of you guys know that I do not kill bugs. This was really hard for me to get Orkin over here to do this. It was easier to spend $272 than the $415 that I spent on all the natural stuff. That some of it worked and some of it didn't. I think I should have gone with Orkin to begin with. I'm going to be dropping their link in the description below. They have multiple different kinds of treatments to get rid of all kinds of animals and rodents and pests on your property. This includes things in the ground and things in the air, as well as things in your house. So I would highly recommend giving them a call if this is a problem in your house or on your property. I did use Orkin once before back in the campground when I was living tiny. I had thousands of red flower beetles in my tiny house. If you guys can remember that video, I will put it right there. I got rid of them with one or two treatments of Orkin. They came the first time, I paid that first initial fee. They came back 30 days later, sprayed again, and I had only seen one or two flower beetles after that. They do a really good job with their treatments, and if you do need multiple ones, it's probably a better idea to get the yearly treatments as that will save you money each time. Now, if I was to do the yearly treatments, it's about like 272 the first time and then $90 per visit after that. If me paying $272 for peace of mind to not have these things flying around my face and around the areas that I'm working or building or trying to do projects, then I would definitely spend the 272 to get rid of them. Now, Orkin does not get rid of bees or things like that. Don't even call to ask them that. They wouldn't even entertain the idea. I wasn't trying to anyway because they do realize that honeybees are important for the environment. I really hope this video helped you and if it did please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and click the notifications bell so you can receive a notification every time I post a new video which is every Sunday. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. I'm dripping sweat underneath here so if you want to Oh my God. So if you want to pull back your hair or, you know, try to help with that, the solution is not expect or sorry, hold on. I to repel these pesky insects. Don't put that this week. I'm going to be uh, a quick note. I will be dropping the links to the wasps or bees or not only did I put them, I even put some in my, uh, my, don't put that, long stream or a dust of cloud of smoke, smoke. This 10 pound bag of dietis, blah. So I had to make a third. I got four of them for Hold on. Also reusable wasp. I have five of these on my deck. 